basically the most important thing I think is to respect that we have to choose let me say stage appropriated methodologies so if you uh, uh, respect the fact that a disease like dementia has of course is characterized by different clinical stages like preclinical and uh, mild moderate and severe stages and uh, then we have to acknowledge that some behavioral alterations might appear in different uh, clinical stages and on the other hand the patients have different possibilities and capacities depending on the stage they are in and so we have to respect this take for example patients that are in a mild stage of dementia then our possibilities to encounter uh, their uh, or to treat their uh, cognitive and behavioral disturbances might adopt a kind of let me say instructive or didactic approach because we can rely on some residual cognitive functions which allow them to take over some advices for example to inform them how to handle on the other hand, if you go in more advanced stages, like let me say moderate stage of dementia, then you cannot rely on some didactic aspect, but you must maybe shift your attention and your, your therapeutic possibilities towards more prosthetics. It means that you have to change somewhat the environment via colors on different lights or maybe uh, changing the, the, the approach is concerning the alimentation of the patient or the clothes he can put himself on and so on. And then if you go farther on in the disease stage, let me say, for example, in more advanced uh, disease stages like severe Alzheimer's dementia or something like that, then it's clear that the patients are more uh, 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 dependent, they, maybe they have lost their mobility, and of course then you cannot even rely on prosthetics but you have to adopt maybe a kind of sensory approach by looking very carefully if there are some sensory contaminators around the patient that might reinforce uh, shouting for example which could be also a reaction due to an overexposition to noise or to light and things like that. A very important aspect is that doctors have to be aware that there are that there is a, a, a tantamount of, of uh, possibilities they can adopt in theory, in in in, in uh, handling uh, uh, behavioral disturbances. There are not only pharmacological approaches, but the thing is that first of all, before we start, uh, let me say, a pharmacological regimen, we should think about how uh, to, 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 to act and how to influence the environmental aspects. And then in the second instance, we should think about how to help the patients by maybe adopt the right medication, which of course is another problem because over medication, because due to, let me say, some uh, uh, collateral effects of medications, you can even induce some uh, behavioral uh, uh, disturbances uh, and so you have always carefully screen for uh, medications and always to rethink uh, uh, from time to time whether one or the other uh, 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 Pharmacon is really necessary or not, or should be adjusted according to dosage, according to weight of patients, and so on.